our third kind of big topic pulls together a few threads that we're seeing. And where we're getting to is that we're seeing that AI is having a really major impact on the profits, earnings, and business health of big tech companies. But it's not always the impact that maybe employees would like. And so here's a couple of data points to justify why I say that. Um, we had a recent round of tech earnings calls, and we saw some major companies like Microsoft, Google, and Meta displaying pretty strong or better than expected results given the economic environment. And some of this growth was explicitly driven by AI. I mean, the companies are talking about AI far, far more on earnings calls than they were a year ago. In Microsoft's case, Azure revenue was up 27% year on year. And they actually said they're already generating new sales from the AI products they've released. Google was a little less specific about its AI plans, but it committed to incorporating generative AI into its products moving forward. And we have seen some reports that Meta is playing a lot of catch up to retool its infrastructure for AI, kind of getting caught flat footed maybe with their emphasis previously on the metaverse, but they still saw an unexpected increase in sales in the past quarter. And then amidst this, there's another side to this coin. All of these companies face enormous pressure from shareholders to get leaner. Um, some have conducted layoffs already, and there are some more that are expected to come. And they're pretty clear on all of them saying they're relying on AI to evolve their businesses and or capture efficiencies. And so this really, like, I think we've danced around the topic for a while, but it really kind of came home to roost in a very stark example with a recent announcement from Dropbox that they're cutting staff by 16%. That's about 500 people. And they explicitly said one of the major reasons for the cuts is artificial intelligence. So co-founder and CEO Drew Houston wrote in a letter to staff that Dropbox needed to act with urgency to seize the opportunity presented by artificial intelligence. But to do that, the company needed a different mix of skills than it has today. He said, quote, in an ideal world, we'd simply shift people from one team to another. And we've done that wherever possible. However, our next stage of growth requires a different mix of skill sets, particularly in AI and early stage product development. So I wanted to kick things off here amidst, you know, better than expected earnings, companies getting leaner, but we're still seeing layoffs and AI powered business evolution. Can you talk to us a bit about the pressure that major companies are facing in boardrooms, executive meetings to adopt AI, to get leaner, to use it, to get more efficient? What have you seen and heard so far in that conversation? There seems to be a, a growing awareness of AI's potential to drive much larger efficiencies in organizations. And as we talked about in the knowledge work episode, efficiency can sometimes be code word for reduction of workforce. So I, I do feel that given conversations I've been having with some bigger companies that there is going to be uh, increasing pressure to find ways to be as efficient as possible for a lot of different reasons, as we previously covered at length in the knowledge work um, episode. But um, I'm optim. I want to say I, I understand there's a lot of like big challenges right now in AI. There's topics we talk about that aren't always optimistic and hopeful. Um, and I'm continuing to like think about what are, what are the opportunities here and, and the Dropbox example doesn't help because they're just like, we're just going to get rid of these 500 people and yeah. um, find people who can work on AI. Basically. I don't think theirs is specifically saying we're going to replace these people with AI. Theirs is saying we got a lot of people who aren't contributing toward our advancement in AI and we, mm -hmm. we fell behind. So Dropbox, he said like, we've been working on AI for years, but like we, we weren't where we needed to be. And we need people on board who can get us where we need to be. So I would say I'm optimistic that in a lot of industries, there's going to be time to figure out how to redistribute these 
workforces. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be um, an effort to find roles and opportunities to increase output, to um, to, to really do more with the, the, the time save. I don't think SaaS is one. Like this is, the, the tech industry is it's gonna be brutal. Like that, there's just no way around this. Um, I, I think there's gonna be lots of middle management that are deemed unnecessary. I think there's gonna be lots of developers who don't know how to build AI tools that are gonna be expendable. And I just think it's gonna happen so fast because the pressure on the SaaS companies in particular is so, is so great. And I have talked with quite a number of SaaS companies in this space. Um, so I, I do think that the Dropbox example could, could happen. I think there's a lot of product teams at these SaaS companies who have no idea what they're doing with AI. Um, couldn't build a product roadmap for AI because they, they have no background in it and they're scrambling to try and figure it out on the fly. And they don't think they don't go deep enough to actually realize the disruptive force it's going to have on their, their product roadmap. So I think SaaS, we're going to keep seeing these stories just one after another. You know, we had Meadow as the big example of 10,000, you know, being laid off, but I think this is going to keep happening. And the other thing I think that's happening is these, these big companies like Google and AWS or Amazon, AWS and Microsoft Azure, like they're trying to find markets for their technology. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, you know, like a Google or a Microsoft or again, Amazon for 20 years, they've been working on AI, but they just didn't productize it. Like the, it was, it was mostly internal technology largely. And so now you're faced with this, you know, reality of, wow, we got to turn this into products. Like, um, AWS is an example. They have, you know, in our book, we highlighted in chapter one, they had like, what, like 30 or more pre-trained AI models. Like, so this was, we wrote our book in early, late 2021, early 2022. And so we highlighted all these pre-trained models that live in these clouds, but none of them were things you or I could go use. Yeah. So like if we wanted to actually take AWS's personalization or content extraction or image recognition, you needed developers to help you build these things. And all of a sudden fall of 2022 hit and chat GPT emerged and all of a sudden like we can just use these. It's like we don't need developer friends. And so I think that's what's, there's just so many variables happening, but those are a couple of the bigger trends that are going to impact this. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of pressure though. I, again, I'm, I want to make sure we inter weave senses of hope and optimism into these conversations. Yeah. And I do really think that there are going to be a lot of industries, maybe ones that are dealing with shortages of workers. So I'm thinking of even the senior living industry as I'm sitting here in Austin, Texas, they have a massive shortage of workers. Um, you know, maybe, maybe AI is a help to that. And, and so I, I want to find the silver lining wherever we can. And I, I think there's going to be a lot of it. It's just right now that these negative things are sort of dominating the headlines. Well, in terms of that silver lining it might be worth spending a moment on, if you're kind of new to this topic, you might be sitting here thinking like, well, I don't really know anything about artificial intelligence. I only know about my area of expertise. And it's like, to your point, that's a big opportunity because you don't need a PhD in AI to take what you're very good at and start applying AI to it and also understanding how AI is going to affect it. You have an opportunity potentially to be that person in your organization that sees where your domain of expertise is going in a world that's AI first. 100%. And actually, that's, that's like a universal theme that I'll say when I'm giving my talks is everyone is um, sort of overwhelmed by this topic. It's everyone's uncertain. Some people are very afraid of it and just want to ignore it. And you do have the chance to be someone in your organization raises their hand and says, I want to, I want to figure this out. Um, mm -hmm. so we, you know, in the, the knowledge work episode, we talked about this idea of forming an internal AI council, using that council to build responsible AI principles, generative AI policies, figure out the impact on the organization, be the person that starts that. I don't care if you're 22 or or 72, like raise your hand and say, I, I think we need to be proactive here. Let's figure out what it means to our company, our workforce, and let's start planning now. Let's not wait till it hits our industry. And so I think that's the opportunity. Again, if you're listening to this podcast, I get that there's a lot of topics and it's kind of heavy and it's not always super optimistic, but you can turn it into something optimistic. If you take all this information 
and just move forward in your career and say, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to help my team figure this out. Um, so yeah, I think the best way to solve for this is to just be proactive with the knowledge you're gaining and do everything you can to, to achieve a positive outcome. I and mean, that's what we're doing every day. It's like, damn, we could easily get discouraged by all of this news. But for me and Mike, it's just like, no, like let's get this information to as many people as we can and let's do everything we can to make sure it's done responsibly. And in the end, like we can go to bed at night thinking we tried to make an effort to have a positive impact today on the industry, on society, whatever. And so I think if you do the same, you'll find hope and in information. I think that's really good guidance if I'm starting to think as a knowledge worker of how to start evolving. In terms of like a couple just really simple practical steps, do you have any recommendations? Uh, if I have little or no AI experience, like what should I be doing right that, you know, this week? Yeah, the thing you and I talk about all the time is understanding is the first step always. Like you, you just have to develop a confidence in the topic to be able to take those proactive actions. So if that means taking an online course or reading a book or going to a conference, like whatever it is, however you best learn consuming a podcast, like however you like to learn, do that, go deep on it. And you mm -hmm. can do it in a week or two. Like, you know, I'm not saying like spend the next two years on this. Just get to a point where you're confident enough. And I've seen it. Like I've done talks for corporations and then had young professionals from those corporations reach out to me and say, hey, I'm in an organization with a thousand marketers. Like who am I at 25 to be the one to do this, but no one else is doing it. And I'll give them guidance. Like, okay, here's what I would do. And you, so you can see the people starting to take the initiative to learn the stuff and get confident enough in it that they can then go and take action. And sometimes they'll reach out to me like a quick LinkedIn message because I feel like they're looking for validation that's like no you can do this like no yeah. one else is gonna be the one and i just like maybe take if you're if you're fit into that where you're sitting in these bigger companies and you're wondering like could i really be the person yes <laughs> you can and take mm -hmm. this as like my one to many um pep talk you absolutely can be the person to do it um i had one of our listeners recently took an episode one of our episodes and then one source from the washington post and took it to actually activate change within an education system Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was enough. Like she just, she needed something to go do. Uh, and I just, I love hearing stories like that. Cause it gives me hope that people are just going to be proactive and find ways to positively affect. This. That's awesome. 